we are going to compare some rating changes, and we are going to start with Alfonso Davies, who had an 84 overall rating in FIFA 23, and in FC 24, he actually got downgraded to an 83. Alex, is that fair? That feels harsh because for the most part, he kind of had one of his best seasons last year. Yeah, he had some injury struggles, but you know, he went to a World Cup, scored at a World Cup. He was had that stretch under Nagelsmann where he's unplayable at wing back. It feels harsh all around, especially his pace is kind of downgraded. Because at one point his pace was 96, and now he's 95. You can ask Mo Salah from preseason. He hasn't gotten any slower last time I checked. You could argue he's gotten a bit faster. So overall, it was just a bit puzzling to see the downgrade, especially that he's now 95 pace. You can't tell me that, you know, maybe killing Mbappe is slightly faster, but two whole pace ratings faster than Davies. I, I was a bit surprised by that. I know it wasn't an entire season, but because of the spell he was doing under Nogsman, he was at an elite level. There was comparisons out there that he's the best left back in this game. So he does, you know, his, I think it's not even about him getting downgraded for FC 24. It's the fact that even 84 for FIFA 23 was already too low. So super unfair to the Canadian star, but one Canadian star kind of got shafted a little bit. The other one, he got upgraded, but maybe it wasn't enough. And that's Jonathan David, who in FIFA 23 was a 79 overall. He bagged 24 goals in league play last season, and he got upgraded to an 81 in FC 24. Is that a little bit more fair, Alex? Jonathan David had a great season last year, scored a lot of goals, one of the top scorers in League 1. I think him having a lower rating is more reflective of kind of how League 1 is viewed, and that's fair. They've struggled in Europe uh, lately. Their coefficient's dropping. They've kind of been, you know, battling with the air to Vizzi. Uh, to even be a top five league and the Portuguese league by coefficients. Um, and he still has a good card that reflects his season. He's, he got good shooting. They gave him the weak foot again, which is a big part of why his card is fun, especially later in the year where when he got that team of the season and those sorts of cards last year, it can be really fun with the five-star weak foot. So I think it's more of a reflection of, of you know of the league he's in. Although it, it does feel like maybe he could have earned an 82 or even an 83 based on the fact that he pushed 20 goals last year. I mean, am I biased? Yes, but 24 goals is an incredible mark. I know that obviously, I guess, Leon isn't looked on that highly, but I just, I was expecting an 83. It's not like, you know, he scored 13 and then 15. It's like he, he put up a huge amount of numbers. 24 goals is no small, small margin, and I'm just super surprised that it was just an 81, but I guess I'll get over it. But the next player we're going to move on to is Stephanie Eustachio, who got another bump. He went from a 76 for his last card, and then this season he went up to a 77, and I think that's pretty fair. Hey, it's good growth. He had a good season, you know, started scoring a lot more, and I think you see it with his his stats. He's got, you know, some good off, you know, solid 60s, 70s, and across the board. I think that reflects him pretty well as a player. He's very balanced and kind of play all over. No complaints, and hopefully he can keep performing and keep pushing maybe towards, a, you know, an 80 within the next year or two. I mean, he started for Porto in the Champions League last campaign. Hopefully he will do so again. He took on that number six, so definitely his confidence is improving. Another player who improved as well, and this one was maybe a little bit on, on the cards for a bit. It was Kyle Lairn, who had a 74 last season. This year he goes up to a 75, but it was simply because he had a very, very hot end to his season in La Liga. Yeah, it was all that Real Valladolid stint. You imagine maybe based on the start he had with Bruges that... Uh... You know, he was he was due for a downgrade, but he heated right up. And I think that's fair to give him a gold card. You know, he went in La Liga and, you know, scored a, a lot of goals in a short time on a relegation starved team. I mean, be interested to see what happens now with this slow start to Mallorca. But he is someone who can score uh, in that league. And hopefully he finds his feet sooner, sooner rather than later to, to show that he was worthy of that gold upgrade that I felt was pretty deserved based on how the second half of the season went. I totally agree. And now it is time for the biggest upgrade for the men's players, Alistair Johnson. And I, I feel like it was known. He was a 70 overall last campaign. He went up to a 75 for FC 24, got the gold card. And again, like kind of like Kyle Lahren with his second half of the season, this came from my opinion from Celtic. That move completely changed him. He's one of the best defenders in that league and he's continuing on this season already. Yeah, I think especially after the move from Montreal, because he was doing very well at Montreal as well. But as we've seen in MLS with these cards in the past, it's hard to get a gold unless you have already come from Europe as a you know gold player already. Um, it's it's hard to make that jump within MLS, so it makes sense Johnson leaves, and he was just so good at Celtic. He's already arguably one of their best players. Even you know this week to make their Champions League debut, he was one of the best players on the pitch in a rough loss for them. A couple of red cards uh, hurt them on the day, uh, so it, it feels deserved, and it's good to see him as a gold. And 
Um, you know, he's got good pace. He's got good defending stats. He could be a very versatile uh, right back option for sure. He absolutely can definitely deserve, but I, I'm a little bit annoyed with the Davies and I was a little bit annoyed with the David, but this one really, really grinds my gears, Alex. And that is Maxine Crapo, who last season with LAFC did the league double and broke his leg in the final to help his side win MLS Cup. And they downgraded him from a 74 to a 73. I don't, I literally don't see the reason for it. Extremely harsh, uh, ex you know, especially with the injury. Like at worst, keep him at the same level, but you could argue he would almost be do for an upgrade of sorts based on uh you know his the, how the season went for for lafc um but you know he was flirting with a gold card 74 and steady he goes down to 73 i felt that was extremely harsh and hopefully with crepo's return he can uh, work to push towards that gold card like he was on track to do before the injury now, at time of recording, Ismail Kone just came off a fantastic performance against West Brom. Definitely his best performance so far of the season. And he has been upgraded from bronze to silver. He went from a 64 overall to a 67. And I think that's pretty fair as well. Yeah, and especially because he was he started his pro career at the beginning of 22. Like he's, this is what, like his, his third FIFA or EFC he's, he's been in, right? Third iteration of this game, I should say. Of course, with the transition between the, the names. Um, so, look, it's something where sometimes the, the growth, t t you know, takes time. And the fact he's already a 67 this early in his career, I have no doubts that uh, eventually he could push towards a gold card. He's probably, he's definitely going to be a career mode favorite. And hopefully over time he can uh, become a decent little fuck card. Now, another career mode favorite may be Jade Nelson, who had the second biggest jump for the men. He went from a bronze card to a silver card as well, but he jumped four from a 62 to a 66, and he's just getting started in Europe. Yeah, and it's a credit to the end of the season he had with TFC. And, you know, since going to Rosenborg as well, he's continued to find his feet, and it's good to see him as well rewarded for his performances. And, uh, you know, as a young player, he's also one of those players that maybe in a few years we could be talking about a, you know, an all if there's ever an all gold men's na you know national team, uh, he'll, he'll his potential indicates he could be one of those players. Now these next two players are both center backs coming up, and they're both very different. So we have Steven Victoria, who had a fantastic campaign. He was amazing for Chavez, and he jumped up three spots. And it's a little weird because usually older players don't get that kind of jump. He went from a 69 to a 72. Alex, before I get to the other player, I mean, I think it's pretty fair just given on his season, but he started this season so poorly right now with Chavez, and he's really doesn't look like he's anywhere near becoming a starter for them again. Yeah, I mean, I think it was fair. I agree. I was just more surprised because, as we mentioned, it's so hard to get upgrades. Heck, somebody were sitting here talking about how David should have got a bigger upgrade, scored all these goals, and Vittoria, especially at his age, to get an upgrade like that, it is a surprise. You don't see that all that often. So it's more of like the shock factor in that, yeah, it's fair, but... You know, if, if someone like David got such a low upgrade or, you know, some some of the other guys who stack you, you're like, well, <laughs> maybe they missed out on a chance to, got, to get more than they, they actually got. Yeah, he was such a rock last year, though. Like, it, it was deserved, but like you said, the age is kind of weird for FIFA. But maybe FC24 have different ideas. I mean, I, I don't know. Same, same company, I guess. But the other player we're going to focus on is Lucas McNaughton and... He started last campaign with TFC, and he obviously didn't play too much. He actually got downgraded from a 63 to a 62. But this campaign with Nashville, he's been incredible. So he's clearly outplaying that 62 overall. Yeah, I wouldn't be. I'd, I'd be very surprised if he isn't a silver card by the end of the year. Of course, there's usually the mid-season update. He has to be bumped up to a silver, which is, you know, 65 or higher. I think a three upgrade could be fair because... He's been, uh, you know, alongside one of the best center backs in MLS, one of the only gold center backs in MLS, if I'm not mistaken, in Walker Zimmerman. And he's been putting in a shift. Surely McNaughton could, uh, could push for silver. So, hey, maybe maybe the, you know, FC employees will be keeping an eye on uh, how he, how, you know, the Canadian guy's been doing, especially after his performances against, you know, Lionel Messi uh, in both Leagues Cup and MLS. That sort of stuff will, will stand out for, to people, I think. Absolutely. And the final player we are going to take a look at is Tejon Buchanan, who had no movement. He was a 72 in FIFA 23, and he's a 72 in FC 24. I just, I feel like he should be a little bit higher, like towards that 75 mark. But again, I thought he should have had that last season as well. Yeah, well, if he continued the start he had before the injury, I'm sure he'll push for it. And hey, hopefully he can get some more fun cards, because that was a nice thing about last year. He had that dynamic duos card. Uh, with Kyle Laren and it was very good. I I, met, I used a lot. <laughs> I used that one a lot and uh, had some fun with it. So uh, hopefully they can give him a similar card this time around. 
Now it's time to take a look at some of the Canadian women's national team players who are entering foot. And I built a best 11 based on ratings. And it's actually a pretty solid one. A lot of talented Canadians in here. I went with the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow variation because that was just the way to get in the most highest rated players in here I could. So in goal, we have Sheridan at right back. We have Lawrence, center back Buchanan and Gilles. Left back Davies. Our CDM is Scott. The two center mids is Schmidt and Fleming your cam is Sinclair and the two strikers is David and Leon a lot to take away from this side the highest rated card highest rated Canadian card is Ashley Lawrence with an 86 Alex what are your takeaways of these ratings especially for the women and do you agree with them some of them are a bit surprising I think um based on what we're seeing it's you know uh, I, I was what does Jesse Fleming have to do for a better rating I think is the big one because you could argue she's one of, if not Canada's best player. Like, she feels like she could be pushing 84, 85. Um, so I feel like that one just remains extremely harsh uh, as well. You'd argue, you'd like to think Julia Grosso's in this uh, 11, uh, you know, ahead of some other players. So what does Grosso have to do more for uh, for her rating? I mean, if she keeps up the form she's been in, surely she's doing upgrade. So those are the two kind of big surprises and even yeah i mean there's a few uh, janine becky of course she's been out injured but uh you'd certainly imagine her pushing for for a higher rating uh maybe even some of the forwards as well like uh jordan hoytemar and Evelyn vm maybe could they have uh some higher ratings but i from the, the kind of impression i'm seeing is that a lot of the the players like scott like schmidt like sinclair who have been around for a while they tend to have some better ratings so maybe it'll also be something that this trend's kind of been there for a while in the women's game because we have to also remember that it's been in, you know, it's been in FIFA before in the past. You just couldn't use an ultimate team. And I think especially now that it's an ultimate team, it's going to only add more attention, more scrutiny, more level to detail. You know, fans are going to notice this sort of stuff. And I think hopefully we'll see a kind of evening out of, of what the players maybe should be. And I think that's where Fleming will finally get her, her, her much deserved flowers uh, <laughs> in terms of her fuck card. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I'm a huge Jesse Fleming fan. I thought 80 was a little low. I would have thought like 83-ish for her and for Lawrence. I honestly thought like 87, 88. I mean, I just, that was kind of like the ones that stood out to me, but it's a very talented starting 11 regardless. And if you can find a way out there to build a higher rated one, send it to me on social media. This is, I had to go up the positions and fit the best players in, and this is the one I came up with. But at the end of the day, Alex, you probably won't see this exact team used in foot because it's not the meta. Now you've played FC 24 a little bit, so I tasked you with the job to build a somewhat meta team. Kind of tell me why some of these players are, you know, just because the rating isn't as high as someone like maybe Scott, for example, why are these players in the meta squad compared to the one I built? Well, of course, as we know, it's always important to consider a few attributes. I mean, no matter the addition of the game, it's always good to have some pace, right? Like. Uh... You know, there's back in the day, per, per Murtisacker wasn't the most usable defender because of the famed low pace. So, you know, pace is something to consider. Obviously, stuff like agility, uh, you know, just overall well-rounded stats. So I, I created a couple, you know, best 11s just for fun. Uh, I mean, first I created uh, a back five just because I felt that was fitting. Canada's kind of flirted with the back five on the men's and even on the women's. It feels like we're always saying they should play back five. Uh, it also kind of fit in the meta last year, especially now that, you know, it's a little more pass oriented, slower gameplay. Having a back five can really allow you to build up. So I thought that'd be fun. I had one right. Sheridan in goal, Buchanan and Gilles, the two center backs. But the third center back I did was Shalina Zadorsky because her card, she's only 79 rated, but she's got good pace. She's got good defending, uh, good, you know, aerial dual stats, like the sort of stuff you want for, for a center back uh, in this game. You want a bit of a mix of size, speed. And she's got that. And then that allows you to put Davies and Lawrence at wing back, which is just going to be electric of allowing them to run. Then in midfield three, I went for Ustakio underneath Fleming and Gross. So I think that would be nice. You can get the balancedness of, of Ustakio. It can be good on the ball, but he's got the well-rounded defensive stats we talked about. Kroso's card, despite the lower rating, she also has a very balanced card, which kind of reflects her style. She also has got good you know, agility and dribbling. Uh, so you can, you know, it's just, she'll be very usable on the ball. Ditto with Fleming. And then I went up front, Laren and David, just because you kind of get the size of Laren this year. The game plays a bit slower. So especially at the beginning, crossing is going to be important. Having a big figure like Laren uh, to put those home will be nice. And then you can kind of have David playing off of him. So I went for 5-3-2 there. Then as an alternative, I went to a similar 4-3-3. 
Uh, so the only tweaks there are that Gilles comes out just because Zdorsky is the speed and uh, the overall bounciness of her card. I have Zdorsky and Buchanan at the back, Davies and Lawrence, Sheridan, so a similar back five. Ustakio Grosso, Fleming in midfield, so that stays the same. David leads the line. The only tweaks are um, the two new faces for Laren and Jill are Nichelle Prince. She's just got a rapid card, great agility. She's going to be a, very annoying to deal with on the flank. And then similarly on the other side, you've got Janine Becky, who has 86 points, similar or 86 pace and a similar card where she's well balanced. She can, you know, cross and shoot, good agility, all that. So I think it could be fun to have those two ripping down the flanks with Lawrence and Davies overlapping them. Out of all the cards we looked at today, who do you think has the most right to be furious with their rating? I'm going to stick with Jesse Fleming. I think based on the season she had with Chelsea two years ago, uh, even she was still very good last year as well, even if she wasn't getting as many goals and assists. She's been so influential for Canada. It, it feels just too low. I feel like she should be pushing. At the very least, you could convince me of an 83-84. Um, but, uh, you know, <laughs> anything less, and it's just it doesn't feel right. So Fleming, I mean... Certainly, you know, go out and have another good season, make it undeniable to, to get a rating bump like that. But but for me, I, I've been perplexed with the Fleming one for a few years now, and that perplexion did not go anywhere when I, I saw the newest ratings. Now, that's a fair shout. I'm going to go with Jonathan David. It's not a surprise. 24 goals in Liga. I don't, I don't care. It's 24 goals in a top five league. He deserves to be higher than 81. I thought 83. Even 82 would be a little bit more bearable, but I thought 83, so I feel for my guy. But honestly, another... Shout because I want to give it out there is Maxine Crepo. If you watched our FIFA streams, you know how much Crepo means to us. And like I mentioned, he broke his leg to help his side win MLS Cup. He did the league double and you downgraded him. It's just unacceptable. But let us know down in the comments which player you think should be the most angry about their rating. Which one do you think should be the happiest? Let me know if you're excited for FC24. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub. We'll see you guys soon. Cheers, friends.